All right, so last time we uh, got the head off, and uh, I think I told you that, um, that I was going to take the cylinders off next. I actually changed my mind on that for two reasons. One, I was telling you about the tool that I used to get into these corner nuts, and this is it. It's just a normal 13 millimeter wrench, a cheap one. And you see how I had to grind, how much I had to grind off of it. I mean, there is basically nothing there, and that works. I've done this before with this wrench, and it's only these two and the two on the other side. However, I had I started having a conversation with somebody on Reddit. Uh, I won't use his username here, but uh, I will say that um, I really appreciate his help. He sent me some really interesting. Um, uh, technical materials on this on this bike uh, every parts book for every year I believe uh, a bunch of service bulletins a bunch of other service related stuff and a couple interesting read just general reads as well I really appreciate him for doing that uh, we had a discussion about this and I, and I said I've never seen uh, a service tool a spanner that was or wrench that was made to do this and uh, about 20 minutes later he writes me back and he gave me the number of the tool and showed me two websites where I can find it so I guess I just never looked it up I just made the wrench that's what we've always done you just improvise on the spot well out of curiosity because when I look at the tool I don't think it'll even work on these particular nuts but out of curiosity, I ordered one. So it's not here yet. So when it gets here, uh, we'll go on with that. The other reason I don't want to take the jugs off yet is while we're taking timing gears off and the primary chain, the chain sprockets, that kind of thing, uh, we're probably going to be moving the, the cylinders a little bit. And I don't want the, the con rods, the connecting rods, to be bouncing all, all over the place and with the pistons on them or without the pistons on them. Well, good news. There's no hole. Why that tape was on there, I have no idea. We are missing a screw, but I have no idea why they had that tape on there. All right, let's get the little inspection plate off. Unlike the 500 motor, this plate is actually used as a as an, an inspection plate. It's an interesting screw. I don't remember seeing that before. I'm going to have to look that up and I'll put uh, it's a pointer for your when you look inside you can actually see it in there. So if you look down in there let's see if we can get in there see that pointer sticking through the case and then there'll be a notch when you rotate that piece behind it the rotor there'll be a notch in there for your timing that's what the pointy screws for this piece off and see if we got points or electronic ignition points so we got one two, three points, eccentric cam fella, cam fella, hey. eccentric cam on the auto advance, and let's go ahead and pull those points out of there. one of the little adjusters. It's a little eccentric adjuster. See as I drop it on the floor. 
See, it's really boogered up there. It's chowdered. There we go. Go ahead and unwire this, get it out of the way. I think I told you I don't have points on my bike. I never have to mess with these things. I've got uh, a Boyer system and I have never had to mess with it since it was put on. Okay, got an isolator, a little isolator, get that back on, get that back on, nut back on. I'll put the points plate back together when I'm done here. All right, so let me try to explain this, and I'll probably get this completely wrong. And if I say something wrong, please tell me in the comments. This is the points plate, the large round piece. Each set of points also sits on a separate plate, which has a freedom of movement about that much, which is adjusted with these little eccentrics that I showed you a second ago. They go in here, they're a little eccentric. Okay? Now, there also is an adjustment here which allows the points to come away from the cam on the auto advance. So, you can move around the advance mechanism, like so, and you can move away from it by using this adjuster. Now, you have to do that on all three of them. You have to make two adjustments on each one of them. It's a pain in the ass. So, a funny story, I was talking to my dad about these and uh, he was saying he remembers, he remembers adjusting them and uh, he said, if you follow the book, it wasn't that bad. But he also remembered that uh, in the middle of a race against a three-cylinder two-stroke Kawasaki, one of those points slipped, which uh, means he was running on only two cylinders, basically, and, and uh, he still won the race, so they do good on two cylinders as well as three. Okay, let's look at the auto advance. Okay, so what you just saw me do there is my kind of makeshift puller. That's a piece of hardened tool steel. This is held in by a taper, which goes in there. Bolt, which goes through and goes into the end of the camshaft. This hardened pin is smaller than these threads. It goes in and it bottoms out in there. And then you take a screw. It doesn't have to be this screw, but this is from the head, it's just a head bolt. It screws into the end of the auto advance, like so, and then pushes on this pin, which then pushes it off of this taper. You can also not use the pin and use like a slide hammer action on the bolt. Uh, Triumph also makes a tool for this. I believe the tool is just this. It's a bolt with a pin on the end of it. If you're familiar with auto advances, this is pretty simple stuff. As the engine increases RPMs, it opens up a little bit. That advances your auto a little bit, or your, oh, advances your auto. That advances your timing a little bit, which is necessary when the engine gets faster. Get these bolts out now. They are posi drive. So you'll want a posi drive screwdriver. Cover then should just pop off, although you got wiring here, remember, kind of got to work that through. 
Yeah, so anyway, after 10 minutes of dicking around with it, they do come out of there. Stator, rotor, alternator, camshaft, camshaft, and the feed from the crankshaft. So now I can see if this engine is free. As you remember, I didn't have a Kickstarter on here, so I had no way of turning the engine over. I'm going to put a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil down in the cylinders. Well, this just turned into uh, something interesting. I mean, it's totally tight. All right, so now we're on the primary side. I'm, I'm really, really curious what's going on here now. Let's go ahead and take the primary off, the primary cover off, and uh, see if everything is in order in there. I'm starting to think this bike had a catastrophic failure. Something more major than dropping a second gear. Okay, this is your uh, your clutch engager. The cable comes through here, it goes on there. This is where you adjust the clutch. These little ramps, that's how the clutch activates. Got a ball bearing in each ramp as you pull it it pulls the clutch okay now we can get the outer, ca outer case off <clears throat> another missing screw two missing screws down there Haven't had to use the manual impact driver once for these. I did pull the drain plug on this. Not transmission, it's just oil. Okay. Uh, Alright, this is the chain tensioner for the primary chain. plug there and then there's a screw inside yes there is a screw inside there there's also a screw case screw behind that plug so you got to pull it plug out okay there's no screw behind there because something's wrong with the tensioner normally you'd slack off the tension with a screw here and there's Something wrong. I freaking drain this thing. Seriously. Drain plugs right there. You guys saw me take this drain plug out. And nothing came out. Now look at it. Okay, after cajoling with it for a little while, I think I finally got it to come free. I'm going to get a look at this. Oh, Lord. Oh my, oh my. Okay, here's what I'm seeing. This is the chain tensioner. It holds the chain up like that to whatever tension it needs to be. This piece and that piece are a part of the chain tensioner. You can see how chewed up they are. That's what was missing when I was trying to go in that front hole and untension this, this tensioner this is the piece that was missing. See, it's got a slot in it. 
So screws on there on the end of this, this broken bit right here. And as you screw it in, and this is the other piece of it, as you screw it in, it makes these paddles tighten up. If you look right here at the primary chain, you see that link, it's broken. So this happened when it was moving probably. There's another piece of it up here. It rattled around in here. I don't see any other damage yet, but that would have made a horrendous noise. If that piece was sitting up there like that, that could have locked us down, not letting me turn the engine. That's why I laugh when I watch Musty One videos, because I'm like, how does this guy always find this stuff that's just ready to go? And all he has to do is clean the carburetor and play with a couple things and set the points and <laughs> and there you go. Because everything I find, it ain't like that. Well, that's not completely true, but you know what I mean. I'm just making fun. I don't, I love what Musty One, I've watched him for years and I'd watch him paint how that clutch goes together. Yep, there we go. That's what it was. It was something in here that was holding that holding that motor from turning. Uh, next time we'll take apart the primary and I'll show you this 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 deal. Mostly common for the primary chain to connect directly to the clutch, which would be here. In this case, this is not a clutch. However, it's not just a, a gear. It's not just a big old gear. There's actually rubber inside of here. And that's to take up forces. Anyway, that's enough blabbering. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. and I was not expecting this. I really wasn't. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.